folks. Welcome into another episode of That Betting Show right here at SportsbookReview.com. It is August 7, 2019, and yes, this is your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. He's Teddy Sivranson. Give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. I'm Donnie Seymour at Right Side VP. Seems like yesterday's show, Teddy, but let's go right over it again. Six more blasts from the Bronx Bombers. The Yankees extend their record. How about those crosstown rival Mets starting to make some news and maybe getting those back page headlines? Let's get right to the hot topics. Five home runs on Monday, Teddy. One up that. Make it a six pack on Tuesday. The Bronx Bombers continue to flex in Baltimore. 14 straight road wins at Oriole Park at Camden Yards for those New York Yankees. And how about now, Teddy? 38. This isn't like a three, four, or five year run or maybe a, 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 a two or three month stretch. This is a series with just the Baltimore Orioles this year on the road. 38 blasts. Amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's one of those records that's already standing at the beginning of August. I don't know when that record's going to get broken, when a team's going to hit more than 38 home runs against one opponent on the road in one year. But obviously, that's what the Yankees are doing. And there's a reason they were $2 road chalk yesterday in a bullpen game. <laughs> there's a class difference between these two teams. And when it comes to August baseball, the bad teams tend to tank. The good teams tend to blow them out. And the betting market's having a very hard time dealing with the New York Yankees facing the Baltimore Orioles today. We'll do a little talk a little bit later in the show about how today's line is going through the roof as well. Yeah, I got to lay a out of it too, Teddy. The manager for the Baltimore Orioles actually came out and said, yeah, those guys are way better than we are right now. So good luck playing in the uh, AL East for the next couple of years there, especially for the Baltimore Orioles trying to rebuild. But let's talk about those crosstown rivals, which we talked about yesterday, and seemingly maybe a topic for the rest of the summer. We were looking at 100 to 1 odds, 70 to 1 odds, now getting under 20 to 1 odds for the New York Mets to win the NL. And they did it again yesterday. Zach Wheeler took the mound, yet another good performance, 5 to nothing. Now, albeit it was against the Miami Marlins, but it's still Major League Baseball. It's still Still counts the same in the standings. Now, when we take a look today, they're actually underway, Teddy, as we film right now with a 2-1 to one lead in the top of the second inning. They can even close it to within a game, maybe even a half game of that wild card race. Those Mets charging hard, Teddy. Sure. And again, a 50-cent move on the Mets yesterday. Talk about the Yankees being bad news for the books of late. The Mets have been every bit as bad, if not worse, because the money's come day after day after day. The book's not enjoying this hot streak. That being said, we talked about it on yesterday's show. The Mets have faced a very friendly schedule since the All-Star break. Their schedule gets a lot less friendly as soon as this series is over. We'll see if this is just a temporary thing for the Mets, beating up on the week, or whether they can actually step up in class because 24 of their next 27 games are going to come against fellow playoff contenders. Yeah, it should be fun to watch because they're going to get a day off. Then it's going to be Stroman with his first start for the Mets there at home at City Field versus Strasburg. So they'll get right underway to see if they can make even more headway, especially in the NL East, and even see farther down the line if they can maybe challenge the Atlanta Braves. We'll find out a little bit later this summer. But, Teddy, tomorrow, first full slate of those NFL preseason games. We're going to go a little bit around the training camp action. If anybody wasn't watching this, and I was, it's something that's almost like a rite of passage in the summer, watching hard knocks on HBO. The Oakland Raiders started it up yesterday. John Gruden was exhausted. Exactly who you thought he would be. He knows where the cameras are. He knows exactly what to say. But how about this one also, as we talk about a little bit later, you know, Antonio Brown's foot, the issues coming up, keeping a tight lid on it. It was a cryogenics. Did he freeze his foot? Having an awful, awful, whatever looks like maybe a foot rotting at this point right now, waiting to get him back on the field. Also taking a look at the Jaguars lose starting linebacker James Onowalu to a knee injury. And also how about this? No surprise in Green Bay, Teddy. That Aaron Rodgers with a younger head coach there, maybe banging a little bit of heads here. Yeah, I like this. I don't like this. Doesn't surprise me with Aaron Rodgers moving forward here. And Robert Quinn breaks his left hand during one-on-one drills on Tuesday for those Cowboys. Let's start with the two injuries, one in Dallas, one in Jacksonville. Two starting defenders, neither likely to be out long-term. I don't think either of those injuries is going to have any impact on any point spread. Certainly not right now. When it comes to Aaron Rodgers, look. I mean, Aaron Rodgers had difficulty getting along with a lot of different people. If you read the offseason expose in Green Bay, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Just ask his parents how well he gets along uh, with everybody. It's been a problem for him. It's been a problem for him in Green Bay. And to see a first-year, first-time young head coach battling with Aaron Rodgers early, A, it's no surprise, and B, it's definitely a red flag when we're talking about Green Bay's chances for the upcoming season. As for Antonio Brown and his foot getting frozen, hey, dude, 
wear socks. Um, but seriously, again, the reports I read is that it's going to hurt for a while, but in terms of regular season impact, it doesn't necessarily look like it's going to put a big damper on Antonio Brown's potential season. The one thing he is not developing right now is chemistry with his new quarterback, Mr. Carr, who by all uh, reports is having an excellent training camp in Oakland. He's been in good form, but he has not yet, yet developed the type of chemistry that the Raiders would want with their star receiver, Antonio Brown. Yeah, get those feet cleaned up over there, Teddy. It looks like he was out running around and running routes on Las Vegas Boulevard during a hot summer month. It's going to be amazing to see him come back from that. But just the pictures make me cringe a little bit. Let's talk a little college football, Teddy, before we hit to the today's card. Top 20 college football team preview today on that betting show for August 7th. Who is it? It's those Georgia Bulldogs, 10-1 to 1 to win the 2019 NCAA title. Team total set at 11, juiced at plus 155 in your direction. If you're going to win 12 games or more, UGA finished 11-3 in 2018, 7-1 and 1 in the SEC. Kirby Smart comes into his fourth season. He's got his quarterback back under the helm. He's got a good running back there, but they do have to replace some of those skill position wide receivers on the outside. The defense, which was very good, Teddy, in 2018, does have a lot of moving parts, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for the rest of of camp as they head into the season. But taking a look at the schedule, it looks fairly good for the UGA Bulldogs in this one. However, they do go to all, excuse me, travel to the Plains, Teddy, to take on Auburn in a key game in October, excuse me, November. Sure. And again, you know, look at the trajectory under Kirby Smart. Eight wins the first year, 13 wins the second year, 11 wins the third year. That's pretty darn good. The last two years, you know, Georgia national program. They're not, no one's sleeping on the Bulldogs. And yet they've still gone 19 and 10 against the spread in 29 line games over the last two seasons. Now you look at the regular season losses the last two years, only been two of them at Auburn, at LSU. Their other losses, well, they lost to Alabama twice, once for the SEC title, once for the national title. And then last year, they clearly had a hangover after losing to Bama again because they lost to Texas and the Sugar Bowl did not play well in that ball game. But the bottom line is the only teams that are beating Georgia are teams that are every bit as elite or close to it like they are. Now, this last offseason, two major changes for the Bulldogs. Offense coordinator gone, defense coordinator gone. That's a concern. That being said, Smart has promoted from within. The continuity is there in the coaching staff. I think that's a good thing. We talk about the QB position. And look, Jake Fromm's been looking over his shoulder each of the last two years. J Justin Fields, Jacob Eason, Georgia's been recruiting QBs. Well, Fields and Eason are gone now, which means... It's Fromm's team. He's playing behind a loaded offensive line. I mean, that is an elite-looking offensive line on paper. It was elite last year, and I would expect him to be every bit as good, if not better, this season. Now, they did lose their three leading receivers from last year, but when it comes to skill position talent, George is loaded. This team will be able to put up points in bunches. That being said, I do have some concerns about the defense. A lot of talent lost in the offseason. It's a lot of only 16 and 19 points a game the last two years, the talent level pretty close to where it's been. It's not like Georgia's short on talent, but new coordinator, key losses. We'll see if that defense is able to live up to expectations. On paper, they look rock solid. But for Georgia to continue their point spread success the way they have the last two years, they're going to need that defense to get stops consistently because when it comes to point spread bargains, the markets are not sleeping on the Georgia Bulldogs. Hey, we'll have a little bit of fun with the Georgia Bulldogs early in the season. Teddy, is Notre Dame's going to come to town and play between the hedges, so we'll keep an eye on that. But now it's time for a little bit of overnight line movers right here at SBRodds.com. You know that's the best place on the internet to get these line moves. We're actually going to take a little bit of a break for Major League Baseball and talk about a game tomorrow night, preseason NFL. All aboard the Indy Express, Teddy. Taking a look at SBRodds.com, we see a nice little shift from the Bills favored by as much as two. Now getting two and a half on the board. Total 35 and a half money line split minus 145 plus 125. Both teams first preseason game. Why is this on the move here, Teddy? Sure. And of course, when it comes to August, yeah, we'll still touch on baseball. But the focus on this show and just about every show you're going to watch is going to turn to football. We'll do that here, obviously, tomorrow, a full a preseason breakdown, uh, at least quick hitters uh, on almost every game. Now, when it comes to the line move here with Buffalo, look, they're cluster injuries on the offensive line. What do we talk about in terms of preseason line move indicators? Cluster injuries anywhere are going to be a problem. Cluster injuries on the offensive line, it's going to be a big problem. Oh, by the way, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of Matt Barkley, who is not 
a mobile quarterback for Buffalo. And then the rookie, Tyree Jackson, from the University of Buffalo, getting his first NFL uh, you know, preseason experience behind a bad offensive line. The market's saying he's a little bit dicey. As for Andy, they like the QB rotation better. Jacoby Brissett's having great reports out of camp, even though Luck's not going to play here. And then the backup, Philip Walker and Chad Kelly, both guys who can make plays with their feet as well as their arms. The markets tend to like that in August as well. Back on the diamond today, Teddy. The Yankees line on the move once again in Baltimore. No surprise here, right? Opens up at minus 200. We're checking out SBRodds.com as we speak right now. Up to minus 250 and more in some places. A total of 10. Paxton versus Means on the mound tonight. Well, look, I mean, you want the Orioles today, Donnie? I don't want the nope. Orioles today. Nope. Nobody wants the Orioles today. You know, they can't even get the wise guys to bet the Orioles today. 11 home runs for the Yankees the first two games of the series. They have a seven-game winning streak. All of those seven wins have come by multi-run margins, so they're covering run lines as well. Means, last time out, 3.1 innings of work against Arizona. Needed 95 pitches to get through 3.1. He was bombed at home two starts ago, allowed three home runs against Tampa. I'm not surprised at all that the Yankees are taking money against the Orioles. The markets in August have a very hard time often attracting money to the worst teams in baseball. Baltimore's playing like one of the worst teams in baseball right there with Detroit uh, at the very bottom of the American League. Not a lot of love for those Seattle Mariners here, Ted, and certainly not for the pitcher that's going to take the mound tonight, Kikuchi, once again. Padres opened up minus 135, opened up and got even higher to around minus 150, a little bit north of that, but now settled in right around that minus 145 range. The Padres and the Mariners tonight, total of 9.5. Padres smacked around the Mariners. Another suspension for the Mariners. Doesn't look good for the Mariners the rest of the way. Is there any value tonight on this Kikuchi pitcher, Teddy? Or are we just going to go Lucchese and say, you know what? Padres is just a better team right here. Do you remember when Seattle was 13-2 and two to open the season? Yes, it, yes we do. <laughs> okay. That was a long, long time ago. And as of, you know, again, American League, so you have uh, nine position players, or a DH, nine guys are lined up on opening day. They got two of those guys left of the nine guys who were there for the 13-2 and two start. Each year retired. Jay Bruce and Edwin Encarnacion got traded. D. Gordon and Mitch Hanniger, uh, in on the injury list. Ryan Healy uh, just underwent season-ending surgery yesterday. That uh, a problem. Uh, obviously, uh, for uh, Seattle. Tim Beckham, you talked about his suspension, 80 games uh, for testing positive for uh, a performance-enhancing drug. That's a huge loss. He's filled in everywhere for Seattle uh, this year. And then you have Kikuchi, who started off the season. He was great. First 11 starts, 3.43 ERA since that time, 12 starts since. One and seven with a 7.65 ERA. He's given up six runs or more on five different occasions. Seattle is a team that's on life support right now. And the market's certainly showing that with all the San Diego money. Watch what you bet right here on that betting show for August 7, 2019. Back to Major League Baseball. The Phillies and the Diamondbacks in a rubber match today out in Arizona. It'll take place a little bit later tonight. D-backs favored minus 135 in this one and a total of nine. If we take a look at last night, Teddy, we talked about it on the show. Jake Arrieta not living long-term in games. Three, four, maybe a five-innings pitcher. You get the feast on that bullpen, which the Diamondbacks did last night. We'll see what happens tonight as the Phillies' number two ace, as I like to say, Jason Vargas takes them out versus young pitcher Zach Gallen, who has just moved over from the Marlins over to the Diamondbacks. The Phillies, 59-54. and 54. The D-backs, 57-57. and 57. NL race heating up for that wild card spot tonight in Arizona. Yeah, uh, I'll give you a hint. If Vargas is your second best pitcher, you're not making the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I pitched really well of late. He had three straight wins before he left the Mets, and he pitched well in his debut uh, against the White Sox uh, last week. No decision in that ballgame. I went to 15 innings uh, before the Phillies found a way to lose. Um the Phillies found a way to lose again yesterday. You talk about that bullpen getting roughed up one more time. And this kid, Gallon, I mean, Arizona traded their top minor league prod, their number one prospect, the shortstop, uh, Jazz Chisholm, uh, for him as a, you know, this is the guy we want to buy right now. He started seven games for the Marlins. Gave up 25 hits, struck out 43 in 36.1 innings. Those are impressive stats. The last two starts before leaving Miami were his best two. Seven innings each time, a grand total of two runs allowed, one against the light-hitting White Sox, the other against the hot-hitting Twins. And this is a guy that had a buck 77 ERA in 14 starts for in the PCL, the Pacific Coast League, which is as hitter-friendly as it gets. Gallon looks to me to be a bet on hurler. Arizona got off the schneid with the win last night. 
D-backs or pass for this batter. But those Red Sox looking to rebound, not rebounding from taking losses from the Yankees, rebounding, taking losses from those Kansas City Royals, Teddy. 7 o'clock tonight, excuse me, 7-10 tonight, ESPN plus Fenway Park live. The Red Sox as high as minus 330. So if you want to flip over and get that 270, 280 price on the Royals, good luck with that. Royals 41 and 74 on the season. Those Red Sox 60 and 56 going to be Sparkman and the high-priced Rodriguez on the mound. Sure. I mean, we talked about these, you know, Baltimore. You don't want to take ball. I can't take the Red Sox in this price. I, mean, I don't care who's on the hill. This team is what? They, they just put an eight-game losing streak behind them. They get a win, and they lose again. At home to Kansas City. They could lose this series at home to the Royals. They lose today. Um, you know, six and a half games back in the wild card, card hunt, right? You know, not buyers to the deadline. Texas. Texas is coming up on them. They're six and a half back, back too, and Texas is winning right now. KC getting offense yesterday, hitting, what, three home runs in that ballgame. Just their second win in the last 12. And I know Eduardo Rodriguez has been their most consistent starter for Boston of late. But, you know, gave up four runs last time out. Uh, Casey hit last night, and I understand Sparkman threw a gem against the Red Sox earlier this year. One run on three hits and five and a third back in June. I can't lay it with, I mean, I'm not excited about the Kansas City side of the equation, but there's no way I can lay this with Boston today. He's, uh, this is not a team that's turned in the right direction at all here in August. Brewers look to sweep in Pittsburgh today, Ted. As we take a look, Pittsburgh's ownership might have to come out like they did a couple years ago and say, hey, we got a nice ballpark. It's a nice night. Just come out and enjoy the game. Doesn't matter if we win or lose tonight. Brewers 59 and 56 on the season in the hunt for a wild card. The Pittsburgh Pirates just find, trying to find Teddy which side is up. 48 and 65 on the season. Pomerantz versus Williams tonight. Yeah, and I mean, you want to talk about stealing a game. The Brewers stole that game last night. They're down 3 2 in the top of the ninth. Base are loaded, two outs. Pirates catcher Elias Diaz throws a pickoff attempt to first. Then the play shifts to a rundown between third and home. And then, oh, the Pirates are out of the inning. Oh, no, they're not out of the inning because Kiaz gets called for interference and the Brewers get the winning run. Uh, you know, uh, it's – and then after the game, Brewers manager Craig Council, quote, we were baiting a throw to first base. They set the whole thing up. They lured the Pirates in and the Pirates fell for it and then they lost the game. Pittsburgh is now 4-20 in their last uh, uh, 24 ball games. This is a team that is – absolutely ice cold right now. Um, you know, Stephen Brault, you know, we got a no decision yesterday. Quote, since the break, we've been bad. There's no other way to put it. It's hard for me to make a case for the Pirates right now, but it's worth noting who may be sitting in this game. Josh Bell for Pittsburgh expected to sit. Uh, Christian Yelich for Milwaukee sat yesterday. May well sit against today. Lorenzo Cain, very iffy today. He fouled the ball off his knee yesterday. That's three big bats that may not be in play here may look at the under in Pittsburgh tonight. Yeah, certainly a pitcher's ballpark out there, but I guess the people of Pittsburgh, Teddy, have moved on, waiting for the Steelers, waiting for the Pitt Panthers, maybe even a little bit of hockey action, but certainly not a good rest of the summer for those Pittsburgh Pirates fans. Off the mic segment today, what a tough life in New England. I can't relate to this, Teddy, but I think you can relate to this a little bit. Times are tough for the Brady House as they place their house on the market for $39.5 million, Teddy. Now, to the common people like me, ooh, that's really interesting to see, but I'm sure you probably got that private email out there for the private showing, and considering that you could probably make a cash offer on this residence, it's just interesting to see how that upper crust lives in life. $40 million house, let's let it move on. But, Teddy, I do ask you this as well. Could this mean Brady wants out of New England? Oh, my goodness. Sure, it's one of those things that, you, you know, you, you note it. Let's put it that way. And I'm sure that there's not a huge market for $40 million houses. So you probably have to put it on the market fairly early. Although, if it's sat for a couple of years before it's sold, uh, I think Brady and, and, and Giselle would be able uh, to handle the maintenance costs uh, on the place. All that being said, why is he putting that house up for sale? It's kind of dicey. And of course, with his contract now expiring at the end of the year in New England, get ready for a whole bunch of Tom Brady rumors for the next few months, they're going to be out there. And here's the truth about it. Nobody knows squat. So whatever rumors you're reading, headline, clickbait, whatever you want to call it, bottom line is Brady's still going to be in New England this year. But some of the stuff from Patriots camp has given me a, a couple of red flags. And this, to me, again, you put it with the other stuff and you say, is the focus level there that it needs to be for New England heading into 2019? It should be. 
But this is one of those things you just file it away. We may come back to it at some point later in the season. Absolutely. We are going to keep you posted on Tom Brady wanting to be a free agent right here on That Betting Show. Thank you for tuning in on August 7, 2019, your one-stop shop for all your sports betting needs. Tomorrow, full slate of NFL preseason action. Both Teddy and I will keep you involved and get you ready to go on tomorrow's show. Once again, give him a follow on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. He is Teddy Savransky. I'm Donnie Seymour at Right Side VP. Join us tomorrow. We'll set you up for that NFL preseason slate. Good luck tonight.